So I think compared to other tropical forest regions of the world, the uh, uh, red experiences are, are fairly advanced in, in the Amazon region in South America, thanks in particular to, uh, to a very uh, active civil society organizations in this, in this region. So a lot of it has been driven by, by uh, NGOs, etc., that, uh, that have pushed this process forward with a whole number of uh, pilots. And uh, I think in Brazil, it's probably uh, uh, sort of the leading country, both in terms of sheer size of the of the uh, and, and its share uh, of the Amazon region, but also uh, quite a number of, of projects uh, that uh, that uh, are in a starting up phase. Um, uh, in Peru, you also have quite a lot of experiences uh, that are taking off the ground now and. Uh, uh, efforts to uh, of a national program in, in payments for environmental services to to uh, possibly link up to that process. In Ecuador, you have a similar similar process where the uh, the Socio Bosque program is making payments for environmental services for forest conservation, and the government is uh, trying to link that process to to uh, uh, to the red process in order to to gain uh, other sources of financing for uh, for its program. Um, so those are at least some examples that, uh, that uh, there's a lot of going on in the region. Countries are starting to see uh, RED as an, as, an, as an opportunity for, uh, for funding that comes in uh, for forest conservation but also for uh, uh, perhaps reaching uh, poor forest dwellers uh, in, uh, in marginal regions where that otherwise uh, would have few uh, possibilities of, the, of the, uh, receiving uh, government funding. So, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's both the motives that are, that are driving uh, the process for governments. Of course there are also, a, uh, uh, there are also skeptical voices uh, even in a country like Brazil which until quite recently from the government side has uh, was uh, uh, objecting uh, the idea of uh, of, uh, of red. Uh, you still see uh, uh, certain uh, skeptical voices and uh, and perhaps ideological obstacles that see red as being linked to uh, uh, a neoliberal way of doing uh, forest conservation uh, uh, that uh, that kind of puts at at worst undermine uh, uh, some of the uh, intrinsic f forces for forest conservation for its own values. I think I'm pretty much divided uh, still on, on that question. I think in, uh, in Brazil for instance you have uh, several indigenous organizations that are preparing projects like the Surui for instance uh, that have uh, uh, prepared a big, uh, a big red project, uh, uh, and in other regions, like in Bolivia, for instance, we've seen uh, uh, some uh, <coughs> counter reactions, and uh, uh, exactly along the lines of what I talked about, it's, that it's uh, seen as uh, selling the oxygen to uh, to the gringos, so to uh, put it in popular terms. Uh, which can be, uh, you know, insecurities about what the process is about, uh, uh, in some cases misperceptions of what is actually uh, at stake. Uh, um, but we'll see in the in coming years sort of how, if that, that uh, suspicion will be broken down and, uh, and read move forward. Outside of Brazil, we have lots of data insecurities about what is actually happening uh, because uh, Brazil has, through its uh, Space Research Institute, INPE, a very reliable uh, monitoring of uh, forest cover uh, changes uh, even, in the short, even in the short run. In other countries, like in Ecuador, the last wall-to-wall uh, -wall assessment of uh, forest cover is 10 years back. Uh, so uh, then you have to sort of uh, uh, look at more circumstantial evidence of what is what is going on. I think the circumstantial evidence uh, outside of Brazil shows that uh, there's probably less of, uh, of deforestation going on 
and a lot of that could be linked to to uh, the fact that uh, uh, we've had a, a huge financial international crisis that has uh, diminished uh, uh, commodity prices. Right now, we see a certain pickup again. We will see probably with a certain lag if if that uh, will again uh, uh, induce higher deforestation rates. If you look at Brazil in particular, there's a, uh, an exciting policy debate. Uh, uh, as to what extent uh, policies can be uh, can take uh, the major part of the uh, uh, of the blame for uh, for uh, for dropped deforestation rates, or whether that is uh, is more due to uh, to uh, low commodity prices, um, and that is certainly also uh, a very interesting research topic, which which we hope to dig into uh, further on.